Hello friends, let us discuss the next topic of basic aspect of non-ideal flow, microfluids and macrofluids. Now, are you knowing the difference between micro and macro? Micro is very, very small, very tiny and macro means somewhat large. So microfluids. A fluid in which molecules are free to move anywhere means they are boundless, which can be collided with each other and intermix with each other is called as a microfluid. Means what is the property of microfluids? They are boundless, they are free to collide with each other and they can intermix well. Now microfluid exhibit no segregation, they are not segregating they are not accumulating at one point. What are the uh, now examples of that? The example are all kind of gases and lower density liquids. Lower density liquid like HCl, a 0.1 normal HCl can act as a lower density liquid. So it can be acting as a microfluid. All kind of gases like hydrogen, nitrogen, helium, chlorine, they are also microfluids. Now, diagrammatically we can show this microfluids. So microfluids are very easily channelized, very easily carried, okay, and well distributed. Now about macrofluids. A fluid in which the globules, globules means lumps or aggregates, each containing large number of molecules of a given age do not mix with other globules, it's called a macrofluid. Now, here the lumps are moving and one lump is no is having no relation with other lump. This is kind of system it is. Let's consider two normal NIH solution, which is flowing through some pipeline. So here, as you are knowing, NIH solution is not a kind of homogeneous mixture, right? It is not a kind of homogeneous mixture. So there are lot of chances of formation of lumps. So that is why that flow of two normal NOH solution in a pipeline is acting like a macrofluid. Macro. Understand what is macro. So a macrofluid exhibit complete segregation. So the lumps are segregated they are separated from each other. So any viscous liquid is a, is a macrofluid. Non-collaging droplets are also macrofluids. So how they are looking like? Every year this circle is a separate lump. Okay. And this uh, lump is not having any relation with this lump. This lump is not having any relation with this. So in this way they are moving, right? So this is a macrofluid. Now, why to study micro and macrofluids? As, as a chemical engineer, we have to design various processes. So processes require various reactors. Not only reactors, but some Processes require downstream processing also. Some processes required upstream processing also. So here the characteristic of fluid is very important. And this is one of the characteristic of the fluid. By understanding of that, you can understand the deviation of the reactor from the uh, ideal one. Now study of the type of the fluid help in understanding the performance of reactor and deviation from ideality. Ideally, our reactor should give a 100% outcome, right? But it is not like that in practical situation. Because in ideal situation, you are neglecting lots of constraints. But in practical situation, these are the hurdles due to which your reactor performance get deviated, right? And one of the major parameter due to which the reactor performance get deviated is a characteristic of fluid and that is why you have to understand which kind of fluid you are handling. Now mac macro fluids 
deviate performance of the reactor badly as they move in lumps and causes the effect of just like they are a micro reactor so each lump is acting like a small reactor and they are moving further and they are trying to deviate the performance of reactor now this create non homogeneous product quality so this is what the deviation of the reactor due to the macro fluids that the product quality is not same throughout so if you like this video please share and subscribe thank you